In this problem, we're given an infinite series in expanded form, negative 4 plus 3 minus 9 fourths, and so on and so on. And we're actually asked to compute the sum of this series. And immediately when I see this question, I think to myself, is this thing a geometric series? Because that's one of the few series that we actually know how to compute the sum for. So what we look for is a common ratio. Am I multiplying by the same thing at each step to generate the successive terms of the series? And how would I get a 3 from a negative 4? Well, I could get that by multiplying by negative 3 fourths. And then I check, if I multiply 3 by negative 3 fourths, what do I get? And that is negative 9 fourths, so it's still working. And to be extra careful, we could check the next term. If I multiply negative 9 fourths by negative 3 fourths, I get a positive. 3 times 9 is 27 in the numerator. And 4 times 4 is 16 in the denominator, so it's still working. So this thing is a geometric series with a starting point of negative 4. And we normally call that A. And a common ratio, in other words, the thing I multiply by every time, of negative 3 fourths. Now the starting point I normally use in the sigma notation for this is N equals 1. And some books will start at n equals 1, others will write the formula in a slightly different way and start at n equals 0, but I normally start at n equals 1. And this is the generic formula for a geometric series. I have a starting point A. When I sub in n equals 1, I get an r to the 0, so this thing definitely starts at A. And then every time n increases by 1, I'm tacking on an additional factor of r. And this was proven in a previous video. But it turns out this is one of the few series where we can actually write down the sum of all of that infinitely many terms. And it turns out to be a over 1 minus r, provided the absolute value of r is less than 1. So for the particular problem we're looking at, we have to check, is the absolute value of r less than 1? And it is, because the absolute value of negative 3 fourths is just 3 fourths. So to be extra complete here, we're going to write our original series in sigma notation. And our a was negative 4, and our r is negative 3 fourths. And it's wise to do this just so we can double check that everything is working correctly. So if I sub in n equals 1, I get a negative 4 times negative 3 fourths to the 0, which is just 1. Plug in n equals 2, and I get a negative 4 times negative 3 fourths to the first. That gives me a positive 3. Plug in n equals 3, and I get a negative 4 times a negative 3 fourths squared, which is 9 sixteenths. And this gives me a negative 9 fourths and so on. So I'm confident that my sigma notation is working. And then we just quote the formula for the sum of a geometric series, and I end up with a, which was negative 4, over 1 minus r, so 1 minus negative 3 fourths. I'll go ahead and cancel the minus signs right there. And in that denominator, I have a 1 plus a 3 fourths, which is 4 fourths plus 3 fourths. In other words, 7 fourths in the denominator. Multiply by the reciprocal there, and I get a negative 16 over 7. And that's the sum of the series, and we're done. If you enjoyed this video, or at least found it useful, check out another one by clicking one of the links on the left, or click the Zach's Lab logo on the right to explore dozens of physics and math playlists. As always, you can leave your questions, comments, and requests in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Thanks for watching Zach's Lab, and best of luck on your math and physics journey.